Hi there and welcome to the Met Office 10 Day Trend. Now during the past three weeks or so, the UK has been through two cycles of what appears to be a repeating weather pattern. Now we've started off, this is the second week of June on the top and then the third week of June, fourth week of June, just to look at the last three weeks of weather patterns. And this shows the temperature anomalies each day. Red for warmer than average, blue for colder than average is what you'd expect. But what we saw during the start of the second week of June was a continuation of the cool and changeable weather that we had throughout the first week of June. So generally blues on the map there. Then those cool changeable westerlies were replaced by a build in pressure and that higher pressure led to day by day temperature increases peaking in a three or four day hot spell for many parts of the UK, particularly towards the south, followed by a return to cool, changeable westerlies end of the third week of June into the fourth week of June before high pressure built once again. Day by day temperatures increase. This time, the increase in temperatures more focused towards the south and east of the UK, culminating in the hottest day of the year so far, of course, the 1st of July. Now we're into July and that heat has been pushed aside and the question is whether we're going to see a repeat. We've got the cool changeable westerlies back as high pressure has retreated towards the southwest back to the Azores and this semi-permanent high pressure that you get near the Azores, known as the Azores High, it's been ebbing and flowing from the southwest through the last three weeks, hence this repeating cycle. So it has retreated somewhat, but actually over the next couple of days, it's going to build back slightly and that's going to bring mostly fine weather to the south on Thursday, Friday and a build in temperatures once again and a build in humidities across many parts of the UK as this more humid air from the tropics comes along. But we've got low pressure to the north and that's going to bring some very wet weather to northwestern parts of the UK. And so we're going to see a continuation of another common feature of our weather during recent weeks and in fact, during recent months or so, a northwest southeast split with the wettest weather towards the northwest staying dry towards the south and southeast. But that high pressure towards the Azores tends to linger through the weekend, and that means that the jet stream will end up dipping south. Cooler, showery weather for many parts of the UK. Again, the focus for the most changeable weather towards the northwest whilst it stays drier and more settled towards the south and east, but temperatures dropping away because of the jet stream dipping south. And the question is whether that Azores High will then build back in again as, as it has done during the last two cycles of this repeating weather pattern. More on that in a moment, but we start Thursday with that northwest southeast split. Plenty of sunshine for England and Wales, and for Scotland, Northern Ireland, a cloudier start to the day. Cool for many of us as we begin Thursday, a more comfortable night for sleeping Wednesday night into Thursday. But given the sunny spells that we'll have across southern and southeastern parts, still pleasantly warm, if fresher compared with recent times. 26 there in the southeast, low to mid 20s elsewhere. But for Scotland and Northern Ireland, we've got blustery showers, some heavy downpours into Western Scotland in particular. And that wet weather will continue to accumulate through the rest of the week, initially in the form of showers crossing the northern half of the UK. By that, I mean Northern England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and then turning to more persistent rain by the end of Thursday night. Again, a fresher night for sleeping for many of us with temperatures dipping to the 12 to 14 range. But we've got these weather fronts establishing themselves across the north of the UK on Friday, whilst that extension of high pressure lingers in the south. So again, a north-south split in proceedings. Cloudier skies for Northern England, Northern Ireland and Scotland. Wet weather pushing in and that rain turning heavy and persistent during the morning across western Scotland, especially western hills of Scotland, with strong winds accompanying it. So not at all good for anyone heading on their holidays. I know the schools are breaking up across Scotland and uh, there might be a lot of holiday makers, especially across Western Scotland, where the weather will be unseasonably unsettled. Further south, a marked contrast with actually plenty of warm sunshine and feeling more humid once again. Temperatures into the mid, perhaps high 20s. Here's a summary of the rainfall through Friday, the 24-hour rain totals. 50 mils widely across western Scotland, 25 across other parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. 
and in some spots the risk of more than 100 millimetres of rain over some of the higher parts of Western Scotland, particularly, say, the Isle of Skye. And that rainfall coming on top of what has actually been a wet June for Western Scotland, parts of northwest England, could cause a few issues. Now, further south, barely a drop of rain on Friday, and in fact, some sheltered parts of eastern Scotland not seeing much rain either. But these weather fronts do tend to topple across the country. They move south. They do run into an area of high pressure, so they weaken a little. But there's always a chance on Saturday of this feature running along southern parts of the UK to bring some much needed rainfall to uh, many parts of England and Wales. And actually, the southwest of England, the focus for some heavier, and more persistent rain, particularly on, say, Bodmin Moor, Dartmoor, where there could be 20 to 40 millimetres tends to fizzle away later in the day. It'll be on and off in many parts and turning more showery as the day goes on. But you can see the extent of the cloud cover across the UK, not much sunshine around. It is going to feel relatively humid in the south whilst fresher conditions arrive into the north. Yet more rain to come for Western Scotland, not as heavy or as persistent as Friday's rainfall. Then into Sunday, all of this turns more showery. We've got a west to northwest airflow. It's a cool airflow. It's on settled with uh, showers or longer spells of rain across northwestern parts of the UK. Fewer showers to the south and the east, but it's always a chance of one or two. 24 Celsius in the southeast, high teens, low 20s elsewhere. In other words, temperatures back close to average, if not in a few spots a little below. We keep that blustery northwesterly into the start of next week. Jet stream dips to the south. It's cooler than average across many parts of the UK. Further showers or longer spells of rain, particularly to the northwest. But this is the point at which high pressure near the Azores could well start to build in again. And there's a lot of uncertainty from this point forwards. But the emerging theme in a lot of the computer models is for high pressure to become more influential again from middle of next week. Now, this sums it up. This is a probability plot. And the chart I just showed you was Monday. And that shows uh, uh, the, well, this shows the probability of various weather patterns, by the way. They're color coded. And the most likely weather pattern for Monday is this color, northwesterlies. There's a chance of westerlies as well. So west and northwesterlies on Monday. The Azores high that we've got at the moment, extending from the southwest, that's colored by this yellow. And it makes a bit more of an appearance later on in this probability plot, which goes out to the next two weeks. But it's not the only weather pattern that makes an appearance. There's an assortment of different colors, and many of them are just variations on the same theme. Here's the top three most likely weather patterns for the middle of next week, 9th of July. The most likely is that Azores high starting to build in again from the southwest. Still low pressure nearer to the north of the UK, so still some changeable weather for northern Scotland in this scenario. But if I step aside, you can see the second and third most likely weather patterns, a westerly flavour there, and a southwesterly flavour with low pressure closer to the northwest of Scotland. The colours represent whether temperatures are more likely to be below or above average, but most likely they'll be not far from average. Although as that Azores high builds in, and this is the top three for Thursday the 10th of July, we are likely to see a return to some warmer than average weather again. Southwesterlies there, quite windy in the northwest, and westerlies, uh, showing that there's some uncertainty about the extent that the Azores high will build in and the uh, scale at which low pressure will be shunted further north. But it does look likely that the Azores high will be arriving closer to the uh, southwest at least through next week. And that's summed up by this pressure anomaly graphic for the whole of next week from the European model. And it shows higher than normal pressure, most likely towards the west of the UK. So that Azores high building back in again from the southwest. And if that happens, temperatures would climb. This is for a midpoint in the UK, and it shows the temperature trend. The red boxes here showing the range in likely temperatures. The red line is the average for the time of year. And as you can see, those boxes dip below average for the start of next week, having been close to average through the weekend. And then they begin to climb. But they get bigger at the same time. So that means there's greater uncertainty in terms of how warm it will get. And that depends 
on how much the Azores High will build back in. After a cool, showery start to the week, the Azores High is likely to return to the UK, but whether it sticks just to the southwest or whether it builds across the whole of the UK, as it did during the last two heat waves through June, well, we'll have to wait and see. So there's some uncertainty about that, and that, of course, will have an impact on temperatures. Yes, turning warmer and drier in many places, particularly the south. Another hot spell on the way for the end of next week. Well, we'll have to wait for more clarification from the computer models. But, uh, of course, we'll keep you updated on all of that right here at the Met Office. You can follow those updates on YouTube. Bye-bye.